Alright, what's up y'all, Take a Fan here. As looks about title today's video, I'm here to teach you the secrets of the standing dunk meter in NBA 2K24. So I'm sure a lot of you guys out there, if you're a center, you might be just an X button dunker. You might be very limited in that aspect and you see some people that might be so absolutely dominant on the interior with a standing dunk meter. Like clips like this, I got three people on me, one leaves, it turns into two. You turn into an easy standing dunk rather than to just get some garbage layup that just misses. Cause as you guys know, by this point, close shots are terrible in this game. That's just how it works. So. What I want to do in this video is go over five very key points that I made sure everything in this video is going to check, which is how to preload meter dunks, aka a situation like this. As you're going to see, the meter dunk pops off super quickly, and if you have driving dunk paired with maybe even if you have slash take, even if you have mediocre driving dunk, you'll be able to get these to pop off as well. Long story short, preloading the meter dunk means I'm flicking up and then holding down on my right stick right now as the ball is arriving even. I'm reading out this help defender. I'm seeing no one is going to be in a situation where they get their feet into that dead zone area that's going to wall me up and stop me from a standing or driving dunk meter. So I'm just preloading it and boom, as soon as I catch it, you're going to see I get straight instantly into a standing dunk. And long story short, when I'm flicking up and holding down, I'm holding down all the way to the point of release essentially. Now, what I also want to talk about too is X versus meter dunk looks, what you want to use your X button or square button versus the meter dunks instead. I'm going to also talk about what to look for from defenders getting to your spots on ball and off ball, AKA with the ball in your hand. And also, as you can see, like a cutter pick and roller combo, just what to look for in terms of getting into these areas, as you can see a combination of that and the preloaded dunk meter right here. And then I want to talk about stupid patience. So what may look stupid to others, but actually is competent patience from you. It's actually this very last shot attempt that I even had right here. You're going to see I was on the break. My boy Joey out here throws me the break and you, like I could even hear in the comms I don't have the audio on this gameplay but Salt was like you're gonna go up with that like here's the thing I actually don't think this is as good of a take I think me going for an X but like if I go for a dunk meter it's not gonna be good from here in my opinion if I go for an X button dunk here it's probably gonna turn into a standing lay because this guy's on my back and the game just registers that as pretty decent defense that's gonna stop me from getting so much of a dunk tendency to pop off essentially so what you see instead is I hit that pump fake to square up I see my player pivot again so that means even more that I don't want to go up with the dunk meter right here because my player is still moving I need to be squared up and and still and once you've really understood all those mechanics and those animations you'll be able to understand how quickly you can go up with that dunk meter and as you can see I understood that it was gonna be one of the little plant my foot pivots right there I, it's actually kind of hard to explain but you guys are gonna see like once I see that animation I know my twisting and turning is over and boom into the dunk meter I go and as you can see that's what I'm talking about with stupid patience so we've already gone over a ton in this video and that was only the intro. So I hope you guys do enjoy this video. And if you do, feel free to drop a like, sub if you new to them, notice all the good stuff. And like always, try this one to a thousand likes. Now, as you can see, our opponent in today's gameplay is a very inexperienced player. He's level one on the season. I understand it's not meant to be super competent gameplay, but here's the thing about standing dunk meter, all right? <laughs> it doesn't matter how skilled the opponent is or anything like that. It doesn't matter their jump timing. It doesn't matter their build or their interior defense or their block rating or anything like that. I'm still gonna show you his build and his block rating and you know, like the fact that he has has gold anchor and stuff like that and hit that he's going to be a giant on this court too as you're going to see joey is 6'9 and look at how huge this dude looks on the jump ball i mean bro and you can see joey doesn't even try to jump for that that's actually our thing we don't even go for the jump ball on our team but look at this I mean, this dude's got to be at least 7'2", maybe even 7'3", and combine that with the gold anchor and the fact that he's got a gigantic wingspan probably too, I just wanted to leave those as some notes for what we're going against with this video right here. Now, as I've already said, I understand they're not a competent team. It's not a super crazy, you know, elite skill level team by any means. Now, our first clip is going to be showcasing you guys the driving dunk stuff right here. So as you can see, this is the point center. If you guys are inspired by this gameplay at all and the fact that we can do stuff like this and put the ball on the floor, that little fake behind the back into a real behind the back set up for a dunk meter and you get the side clutches as well because it's 92 dunk that gets that and then I have 96 dunk so it's like <laughs> it's just such a crazy build so if you guys do find any inspiration out of this video or you may want to track out other videos that I've posted and see how we play with this stuff of the fact that it can put the ball on the floor and still be up center as well you can definitely check that out obviously we have videos on the channel and then I just want to show you every basket that is made in this game so you can see like a alley-oop right there pretty pointless for me to show but now we're back into the gameplay that i've showed you guys a little bit but let's go over all these as a little bit of point of interest so 
Offensive rebound. I need you guys to know, you do not want to go straight up with this, all right? I learned this the hard way early on in the year. If I ever tried to go flick up and hold down as soon as I got the ball, you're going to get a layup at literally 99 to 100% of the time because what's going to happen is your player is not squared up with the basket yet. So even if you try and get a dunk, you're not going to be able to be animated into one. So as you can see, instead, I'm, I'm actually not even going to hold my controller and just stand still. I'm actually going to walk this into them. Now, you want to be careful with this stuff because if you don't go into this with the anticipation of pump faking, you're going to get hit with an immovable enforcer animation almost every single time. You need to understand how far you need to hold your stick until you can tap your X button to go for the pump fake to square you back up. And then you're going to be like lodged straight into the dead zone area. So I'm going to try and explain all that real quick right here. So as you're going to see, I got the offensive rebound. I am now moving into both defenders, but with the anticipation of the fact that I'm going to pump fake, as you can see, to stop my movement. And it makes it so I don't get hit with that bumps, that bump, you know, immovable enforcer animation, essentially. And now because I set my feet, as you can see, with that pump fake, now that I've set my feet, I'm in like a green zone for the dunk meter. It, it's going to be super good. I told Tonic right here, it doesn't even matter if his spacing was screwing me over because no one's in dead zone area. And that's the thing about standing dunks that's so toxic in comparison to the driving dunks. With the driving dunks, if someone's standing directly under the basket and in front of you, it's going to be a like a super minuscule meter, like not even the sliver at the edge of it. And it's almost unmakeable to an extent that you have to be like almost probably a, a two millisecond or three millisecond green window or something like that. It could be a little bit bigger, but obviously the variety that you can get with dunks may influence it to be harder than a, a greening a jump shot, essentially. And it's definitely harder than greening a jump shot for sure. But anyway, when it comes to these dunks that you can see the huge dunk meter, it, it, and I, I'd explain further but I don't want to spend too much time on this stuff. I wasn't talking about these types of dunks. I'm talking about the sliver ones, but I'm talking about harder than, you know, greening a jump shot. But anyway, let's stay on track a little bit here. So as you can see, we squared it up. It doesn't matter if the player's down here. It doesn't matter if the center's down here either. If they jump and block it, it is possible to block, but it's very hard to sync those up as a defender to like jump for the blocks. And not to mention, jumping gets you out of those dead zone areas in the first place most times too. So if you ever have someone in the dead zone with those pump fakes, you can literally just spam pump fakes. It may even just nudge you forward a little bit as well. It's actually kind of ridiculous how well it works. But anyway, let's stay on topic here. So as you can see, boom, offense rebound, walk into the defenders with the anticipation of pump faking now that i've pump faked and squared up boom we're going to flick up hold down on the stick dunk meter now just time it out watch the meter boom there you go i've I, also if you're curious about animations we're not going to show all animations in today's video because i've done it in many different videos that, by this point for the last couple weeks or so but I'm pretty much just running as many standing dunk packages as I can, including the NBA player ones. And then with the small, you know, exclusion of some of them, I guess I can show you guys at the very end of this video the dunks I'm using, but we'll, we'll just stick to the concept of the video for the most part right now. Long story short is I have a lot of dunk packages on that help me get more standing dunks because I believe you need to in some aspects to be able to get the most reliable standing dunk animations possible. But anyway, again, another offensive rebound right here. You can see we're not even doing those like passes down in the paint. This is just stuff that you can use utilize as a center no matter who you are no matter what your driving dunk is or anything like that standing dunk is going to be carrying you right here and as you can see we get the o board i'm already in position for this so now all i'm doing is just waiting for my player to set his feet it's about as simple as that it's nothing more than that i didn't have to walk my way into anything and as you can see boom we're just waiting for that little square up animation right here i'll, I'll try and point it out it's right about here you can see it's once again pivoting to the ground and that's where we want to like you know transition into the standing dunk pretty much this whole animation right here where I like I don't want to go up the dunk meter yet I still don't and now that I've waited out their jump a tad bit and I can see my player plants that foot and goes to that little you know mini drop step in a sense boom that's where we want to start that dunk meter and you can see I'm actually doing the meter like inputs like I'm flicking up and holding down earlier than what you would expect. It's just in, in anticipation of that player planting that foot right there. I've, I've done this stuff so much to the point where I've like figured out those small little details and stuff like that, but you'll understand as you do it a little bit more as well. Now, this is just a random miscellaneous tip for anybody out there that wants to utilize stuff like this. If you happen to be on a build like mine or a driving dunk slasher, this is just a, a tad, a little tidbit of information that we're going to drop right here. So you can see their center is lined up on Joey. The center doesn't want to guard me because he's seen I put the ball on the floor. He doesn't want to guard all that mobility and stuff like that. So instead, what I'm going to do is a give and go with the person that's guarding, being guarded by the center. So boom, you can see 
Center wanted to drop and be ready to drop to me when I when I drive, but the problem is now I've passed the ball to somewhere he has to defend because there's no near defender to guard this guy. So now the whole defense gets lost because the anticipation was that he was going to drop and that he'd be the one to guard me in the paint. But now I just made it so he can't guard me and I use Joey as the give and go guy right there. And as you can see, another preloaded dunk meter. I didn't have to right here, but hey, it's not hard to make. So I just do it anyway when it's wide open more often than not. I'd probably miss like one or two of those all year by this point. So anyway, moving along, we also have another preloaded dunk meter. And a lot of the stuff you guys are going to see does implement driving dunk. But I want to explain to you guys how if you have a center out there, I'm just going to tell you right now, when I see centers that have driving dunk on them, I cannot begin to explain to you how much more intimidating that is as a defense than if they just have standing dunk. Because there's going to be situations where as a pick and roller, let's say I was just on a pick and roll right here. And let's say someone's set up to drop, essentially. The problem is, with this case, this guy, if he was bigger, let's say he's the center and he's the dropper, right? If he gets there a little bit late, the problem is that we can't go into a driving dunk meter very reliably with this. So most centers have to set up and like, you know, hope for a good catch. They got to catch the ball, square up, do exactly all the things I just talked about and go up with the standing dunk meter. The driving dunk meter allows you to preload these meter dunks. And if you're a rotate based defense, it is absolute pain for you to deal with something like that. When you have a driving dunk pick and roller, it can really be a problem. Now. There are other situations where, as you can see right here, I'm going to be not doing a dunk meter. And it's not because I think it's a better time to use X button than dunk meter, because there are a couple times that are like that that we'll explain pretty soon here. But with this one, I'm waiting out the pass because I'm not sure if it's going to get through or not. I'm not sure how my player is going to catch the ball. I'm running out of baseline territory on this too. So it's possible that if I got the ball and it was way too close to the baseline, that I would have been in a little bit of trouble because you can't get dunks if your player's feet are like way below the basket. Like don't do it when you're straight like heels on the baseline type stuff. That's kind of danger zone to go for a dunk. You're going to get a layup way more often than not. But instead on this one, I, I do tap X, but that's out of anticipation to try and pump fake. But the thing is, it works both ways. Because if you get a pump fake right here, it's fine. Because you're just going to square up with the basket. And boom, now we're in standing dunk meter territory with a small guy on me. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. Or you're going to get an auto dunk off an accidental pump fake. But that's fine. If that triggers off, that means that you were able to actually get a driving dunk. I'm not really sure how to explain this anything further than telling you guys that there are animations in this game where when you tap X, if you can't get a dunk right here, it's not going to make you go up with the dunk. It's going to give you a layup instead, but it won't make you go up the layup because it'll just turn into a pump fake instead. Whereas if you do tap X right here in anticipation that it's going to be a pump fake, but then the game decided, no, you're driving too hard. Like this is not pump fakeable. You're just going to have to go up with this. It's going to turn into a dunk if you're open enough for it. I know it's probably so complicated to hear, but I promise you guys that's actually how it works. It's, it's pretty crazy. But anyway, speaking of crazy, we've got another ridiculous offensive rebound right here. And yes, you can see Tonic is open. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. This was a pretty mediocre take, but here's the thing. This is actually another one where you actually do want to use your X button instead of dunk meter. So with this right here, you can see he, he got a jump animation and now he's kind of like dead zone area. I've seen from time to time where ones like this or uh, let's go back to the spot where I actually started my dunk meter input is like pretty much or where I would have, I should say, is where he's pretty much like jumping. And let's go back to where I'll call like the point of no return where you have to either decide that you're going to dunk meter or not. So right here he jumps, right? And to me, I don't like that stuff. I don't like how he could have like maybe got himself into a dead zone, like a uh, defense position where he's then in front of me. I'm not sure what to read off that dunk meter right there. So instead I see he jumped and that's a really easy opportunity to go for an X button dunk as well as, like I just said, to cover all bases. If you go with those X button dunks, it's not something that gets kicked out of those garbage, like tiny millimeter dunk meters. Like, whereas in this one right here, you just go straight up. What I'm trying to say is, if you were to try and dunk meter that right here, it's possible that that animation that his jump could have gave him make it a super small one where you like would have really regretted going for a dunk meter is what I'm trying to get at. And I do apologize to you guys that this is some complicated information. I know you're probably thinking like, man, I thought this whole dunk metering stuff was and, and it looks so brain dead too. I promise it looks so brain dead when you're watching the gameplay and stuff like that. And I understand it, with a little bit of work, everybody could be just as good as I am with this stuff. It's, it's not hard at all. And I'm not trying to like boast an ego or anything like that when it comes comes to this stuff but I just want to explain to you guys that there is like some intricate stuff to this that you do need to know in, in in an attempt to actually be this good at it and I'm again I'm not trying to downplay or overplay the difficulty of doing this because it's very easy but 
you do need to know some base information. Now, speaking of which, we got a defender not playing. We got a guy not back on the break. You're going to see me be a ball hog. But I want to show you the openness of, like, you actually want to take some routes on this. So, as you can see, I'm going for that outside lane, but he ends up, like, kind of cutting me off right there where that would have got a good off-ball pest animation. And people probably wonder, like, man, how do these centers just keep giving up passes to the paint? But honestly, I'm telling you guys, there is like a route running aspect to this stuff. If you if you see people trying to cut you off, it's the same thing as dribbling. You got to move the opposite way. It's the same way where I would like bait someone to play my left by driving that way, but then do a behind the back back to the right to kind of snap it back that way too. Always trying to just snake through, you know, wiggle left and right coming up the court and stuff to make you really unpredictable for your defender to be able to get off ball pest animations or passing lanes or anything like that. And as you can see, we get that pass to drift us into the paint. This is another situation where I've preloaded meter dunk. So as you can see, once I hit that little front cut on him, boom, I'm, I'm flicking up, holding down right now, and it gets into a meter dunk instantly as soon as I touch the ball on that baseline. Whereas if you were to catch the ball right now and then try and meter dunk, like if you flick up and hold down on your stick right now, you're going to catch the ball. You're going to get into a catch animation, and it's not going to give you a meter dunk. It's probably going to give you a layup. And even if you do get into a dunk, the problem is you got into it way later than I did right here and then the defenders all squared up and walled up on you the the key to knowing to preloading these meter dunks is so important it, it, i cannot even stress how many times i've actually scored off the fact that i am preloading these meter dunks now right here once again another aspect of getting open off ball this is the we'll call it up downs this is what this is what we call it right so first one going right here i'm going for a slip i feel like it was a decent angle to throw at this point the dude has to play a passing lane and this is why a lot of times I bully centers off of me because they don't actually want to guard me because of the fact that they get stuff thrown right at their head and it's hard to lane on a center bro I mean this dude's super tall his steal rating is you know probably below 60 for being completely honest and even people who do have the 60 steal rating or even 70 for seven footers and 611s and stuff like that people with bronze interceptor don't guard this stuff very well so at least a really easy opportunities on those cuts or as you can see if I'm not open on the first one you can bet that I'm running up to the top and then I'm tapping my RT moving back to the base line and using that spot finder to boom flare back to the top or like flare back to the paint and then I, i'm not really sure if yeah okay so you can see spot finder does pop up so i'm explaining to you guys i'm actually utilizing that get open feature or like spot finder in this case where i'm hitting that little run to the top and then as soon as i'm turning back around to the baseline tap rt and as you can see it gives you some crazy speed boost animation the guy gets jolted out of the way this is one where i didn't preload a meter dunk so in this case i'm not going to go for a pump fake because i see it's open enough so boom we're just going straight up with the dunk if he were tighter and closer to that we're going for a pump fake square it up flick up hold down you know we're going for that meter dunk straight like that simple right and if he walled me up super good maybe we could like walk it down the, the way that we did earlier in the, in the clips and the videos as well but for the most part we're looking pretty good in all those other ways so right here once again center has to play a lane can't do it <laughs> he just can't do it bro and we preload that meter dunk again this time he's actually walling up really good as you can see he like completely just walls me up right there easy right well here's the thing so now once again we're going with that little up and then we're tapping rt back down we hit him with the front cut again i'm gonna call it a front cut because in my opinion i'm cutting like closer to where the ball is so it's on some like wide receiver in football stuff where you want to come back to the ball right I'm, I'm getting closer to the passer than the defender is and as you can see i'm getting like that sealed off animation right there whereas if i were to cut away from the passer and like go over here to the right first of all it's a terrible spot to be because that's where the defender already is and then second of all too it'd be terrible too because i'm giving him an option to either boom break that up get a pass interference maybe the ball goes flying past the both of us and it goes out of bounds maybe i catch it and he gets a immovable enforcer animation or he just plays the passing lane there's a lot of stuff that go wrong with that so instead you can see boom we preload that meter dunk on this one and then you know we just front cut him simple as that and it went super smooth really easy now right here you can see salt's gonna take a shot we're once again gonna play for a rebound we're covering the area of that center i see in this one this is very key information for you guys who want to utilize this standing dunk meter to its most elite ability i see that i catch the ball in a really bad spot i i don't want to dunk meter these he is just about as close to the hoop as i am he's right on my hip it's possible that with this jump right here he would have made it so i can't get the meter dunk and i promise you if i did go up at that it would have been a tiny one because it's just a good spot to be so instead as you can see we wait that out 
I'm, I'm just sitting here. I would have walked it down a little bit, but seeing the jump, boom, you just go up the dunk off that. It's, it really works the same way you would expect to be able to utilize it in any other way that you would in previous games of either going for the standing dunks or just going for the mashing like X button close shots and stuff like that. If people jump, they're not going to be able to get a very good contest animation or to stop your dunk animation at all from playing out. So they kind of just jump them, jump themselves out of the play. Right here, you can see once again, getting open into those dunk areas. I mean, man, I'm telling you guys, this stuff can be very key for you, no matter who's guarding you. Right here, once again, we're passing to Joey at the center on him. It makes so the center cannot be the dropper for us. You can see I try and go for that cut initially, but he's there cutting it off toward, toward the side that I cut from. So you can see I kind of re-angle that. I hit that little front cut once again. I'm, I'm getting like inside the defender, pause. <laughs> I'm getting inside the defender, closer to the passer, and then we're in that front cut area, boom, into the dunk spot. There we go, easy dunk again. We are 100% field goal percentage in this game, bro. <laughs> I hit another up down right here, but AK's hating. He's not passing me the ball. He hits, yes, a wide open hash right there, but unfortunately salt misses. Now, once again, in terms of talking about the standing dunks, you may think right now, like someone might think this is a good spot to dunk the ball from. There's no defenders in front of me. I'm going to be all good. Here's the thing. Defenders are near you. The game realizes that and makes it harder for you to get those dunks. Not to mention, if you get a layup from here, it's possible that someone's going to give you problems with it. So instead, you can see once again, I'm walking it down. I tap X before I actually finish that rundown. I'm going to explain this too. I'm, let, me, let me give you guys exactly where I tap my X button at. I'm doing it right now. Like right here is where I'm tapping X. Obviously there's a little bit of delay. As you can see, boom, it stops you right there. And then your, your idea with that X button tap is run as far to the paint as I need to and then tap X as close to the basket as possible. Because what it's gonna do is it's gonna put you directly under the basket in the most dunk meterable spot possible right here. This is literally the most unguardable spot to be in the, in the court, period, is to have a high standing dunk while sitting in this cylinder right here. And I would even argue like, you wanna be pretty much like right where these uh, hashes are or where the circle ends. You wanna be standing right about there and as close to the middle of it as possible. So like right here where the circle would end, boom, as close to that spot right here as you can be, the better. And as you can see, boom, into the easy dunk meter we go. We got 30 points on 100 field goal percent, bro. And it's like halftime. Center quits out, finally. <laughs> We're still gonna go ahead and show you guys a couple situations. We only have two more dunks left, but as you can see right there, X button dunk. I guess like, you know, not really worth breaking down to be honest with you. But then the last one, I do want to explain this because you're not really going to understand it until you ever saw it. And we talked about this in the intro, but this is the whole stupid patience thing I was talking about. So it may look stupid, but I promise you guys, the patience is a good thing to have. Now, if people are going to start fouling you a lot, because I have dealt with that in the comp pro-am aspect is when people start hitting their select button and they'll just boom, instant foul you right here, right? Because they see that it's something that you've been doing of getting to that dunk meter spot then you might want to rush them a tad bit more, but honestly, depending on how close you are to the bonus, just eat the two free throws, honestly, depending on how good your build is at shooting free throws as well. But anyway, with this one, like I said, I'm out on the break, I get a bad catch. So instead of going up with the dunk as soon as I catch the ball, because I I know how this works, fellas, I know exactly what's going wrong with this. My players turned around all the way to the basket. His backside is literally facing the backboard. You'd never want to hold X while you're doing that. I promise you, you're going to lay up nearly every single time unless you run like Daryl Dawkins dunk, which is terrible for driving dunks. It's one of the worst dunks you could possibly get. So I don't run that dunk. It does have the glitchy, like, you know, he'll like turn around and boom, just fling it into the hoop while he's facing backwards animation in it. But I can't do it, bro. I cannot do it for the sake of driving dunks at all. It's terrible. But anyway, we walk it down. We had a pump fake. I want to make sure because then you're like, because then you're thinking, well, Laker, just go right up with it after you pump fake. Boom. There you go. You're good. Nope. I promise you, your player does this little stupid pivot step where he turns around and squares up to the basket as much as possible. But that's to our advantage if you let it be. So we let it happen. We let that little pivot step happen where it squares us up with the basket. Boom. Flick up. Hold down. No one's stopping you unless they block it from that point absolute unstoppable and as you guys can see we end the half literally and the center quit you know like maybe everybody quit by the way for that matter only after i scored like 15 of them so i had 30 points so we scored 34 points and a half on nine rebounds 17 for 17 my teammates only throw two turnovers trying to get all those passes to me and not to mention we did a lot of them through offensive rebounding it wasn't even forced for that matter like by my teammates that much so 
anyway I just wanted to show you guys this video right here I know it wasn't against the, the craziest comp level like I just said but there's a lot of these mechanics that j they just feature into no matter who you play it doesn't matter the skill level when it comes to this dunk meter stuff and that's what I love about it is when I take this stuff to the comp games the only thing that comp players do better than these guys right here at stopping me is either a making it hard for me to dribble my way into openings and like as a point guard or B they play passing lanes better but a lot of the principles when it comes to like playing against centers and stuff like that it'll never change they, they generally don't lane it very well I would even argue it's hard for people to spam passing lanes on me 24 7 in this game you would argue well then just sit low but the, I didn't even get into the whole fact that I can hit like floaters and stuff too or that if I get the ball for free super easy then I can initiate my offense of actually like doing it as a driving dunker and as a ball handler we haven't even you know showcased that much and I may even actually showcase you guys a little bit of a driving dunk tutorial for the dunk meter and the secrets to that pretty soon as well but I just wanted to show you guys this and the standing dunk meter utilization and the five key tips that I had of the preloads what to look for from defenses X button versus meter dunk looks which one you want to do getting to your spots with the ball and without the ball and then stupid patience you know the the classic coin term that I have right there but anyway that's all for video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on noties, all that good stuff. And like always, rise one to a thousand likes. If you made it to the end of the video, put dunk in the comments, start supporting me all the way through. Or put skill gap if you would like. That's what me and my boys call it, is like throwing it at the center's head. And I told them the skill gap in our lineup is whoever's willing to throw the bad passes that look like they're bad, but technically they just lead to the highest efficiency shots in our lineup. So we call it skill gap now, throwing it right at the center's head and just praying that I do something well with the ball. And honestly, it's been working out pretty good. Uh, I'll show you guys my stats in the dunk league pretty soon. I, it's unbelievable. But anyway, that's all video. I hope you all enjoyed. None of that. Take these, man. Peace.